Welcome back to another episode of Being to Bushcraft. Um, just from home from work, as you can see, uh, the wife's at work and the kids are away staying at grand, so I thought this would be the perfect time to uh, get some kit maintenance done. So I just brought this in for the car. I've got Max here and my knife. Both took a batter in at the weekend there, so they get some work done on these. So I'm going to give the axe a good sharpen, clean up the head a wee bit, and they actually polish the head as well. And the handle, I don't know if you can see it in this light. If it focuses it. I'll try to turn this light on as well. Right, so. No, it's not the greatest. But anyway, the, the handle itself is dirty, caked with mud. So I'm going to sand that down a wee bit and re-oil it with some boiled linseed oil and again with the, the knife just clean the blade up a wee bit give it a wee sharpen but before I do any of that first thing is first I'm going to get the kettle on so I'm going to make myself brew and I'll bring you back once we start working just before I go and make that a eh, coffee I'll just a eh, Turn a different light on, so I don't know if this might help. We see you can see the the state, the colour of that handle. It's it's mock it. So I'm just like this. I'm just get a bit of sandpaper, clean it up a wee bit, and get some boiled linseed oil on it. But anyway, I'm gonna go and get that a eh, that coffee on there now. Just while I'm making this coffee, um, I'll just show you something. So when I'm in the house, I have instant coffee, two sugars, and a splash of milk. But when I'm out camping, I don't like to be doing that. It's, uh, it's too much stuff to carry. All the different jars, two seconds of others, right? Here's this camera up, guys. Um, yeah, so, let's see. Uh, too much stuff to carry, carry you know, different jars, one for coffee, sugar, a uh, wee cart of milk, etc. So when I am out, I carry these wee sashes. This cafe original, three in one. So that's your, it's your uh, coffee, your milk and sugar, all in the one sachet. So I take about four or five of these out with me. One sachet per cup, and that gives me I brew straight away with some hot water, saving all the faffing around, trying to make a coffee. Uh, aye, there are other brands available. Uh, this cafe is the ones that I prefer. So I just thought I would share that with you. That's a, uh, I've had my cup of coffee. I've got all the, the kit and equipment out that I need for the, doing these tasks. So I'm just going to move the camera down so it's facing down towards the table and show you what I've got to do these jobs. So you can see I've went and put a, a tea towel down on the table here. Because the wife would go absolutely crazy if I'd done this on the, on the table. She would still go crazy, she'll still go crazy when she finds out I've been doing this. Um, she doesn't like me bringing my bushcraft stuff into the house because it makes an absolute pigsty of the place. So anyway, I have got just a little Tupperware plastic tub here filled with water, a sharpening stone. This here is just a, a really cheap sharpening stone which I got from B&Q. Um, I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure that most hardware stores, DIY shops will, will sell these. So water stone, two different grits. You can see the the two different types of grit here, and you can see uh, uh, it's been pretty well used. So anyway, I'm just going to plop that in the water and now. Let that soak up some water. And stick it to the side. Also for sharpening, this is a something that I use in the house when working on my tools, and I take this one out in the field with me. I've actually showed you this before, so it's this is a 
it's kind of like a cross between a file and a diamond sharpening stone. So again, it's two different grits. There's a, a rougher grit on this side and a really fine gri uh, grit on this side for uh, finishing the blades off. And again, I've already showed you this before. The sheath itself is leather. It's got the glossy side here. You can see there it's a uh, sharp pal. And this side here is uh, the bare leather, which is uh, good for stropping on. I told you I was going to sand the handle down with the axe, so I've just thrown some sandpaper, 120 grit. Fairly rough, it's just to just to take the, the dirt and the grime out of the axe handle. Once that's done, get a, an old rag, an old cloth. This isn't an old one, this one is out the wife's, uh, let's see, the wife's drawer, out the kitchen drawer, so when she sees I've been using her cleaning cloths, she'll go crazy. And some boiled linseed oil. So, the first thing I'm going to do is my knife. Which is really dirty. So, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go away, give it a clean first before I start to work on that. Right, so I've been away, gave that a knife a little clean up. It's still fairly sharp, and the one thing that I'm going to say about my tools is, and you'll see it on other YouTube channels, other bushcrafters, they, they like to keep their, their tools so sharp that you can shave the, the hair off your arm. Why? I don't get that. The, your axe, for instance, your axe is going to be getting used for processing wood, processing wood down, chopping wood, making steaks, etc. So the axe itself, that that doesn't have to be that sharp to perform those sort of tasks. And your knife, your knife could be used for again processing firewood down if you're batoning the wood. Uh, food prep, and again, it doesn't need to be that razor sharp that it's it's taking the the hair off the back of your hand and your arm. It, it needs to be sharp enough that I'll I'll slice through wood, and to batten wood down, you you don't need it to be sharp for that. It's it needs to be sharp enough for it to sink into the wood itself. But the real the thing that actually splits the wood when you're batoning it down is the is the thickness of it is the thickness of your blade. So you imagine that you're, you're batoning your wood down and it's the thickness of the blade, so the thicker the blade it, it creates a wedge and prizes the wood apart. So again, your, your, your knife, again, it doesn't need to be that sharp to do that. So anyway, moving on to actual sharpening it. Now that, that um, the, the water stone has a, it's soaked up some water, So starting here, you, you can see the, the, the angle, the grind. I may be teaching some people to suck eggs here, but there may be people watching this that I've never seen how to sharpen a, a knife before. So stone down flat, that, that's the knife flat on it, but you just want to tilt the, the knife forward, you see? how much that's tilting there. You want to tilt it far enough forward so it's sitting on the, the angle of the grind. And you just want to push it forward. Not digging the blade in. That'll damage the blade just enough so you feel you feel it sitting on that angle, pushing it forward. Now I would do that. I'm not counting here, but quite a few times. And just working your way from the, ba the base of the blade along to the tip. Some people like to do it straight like that and I've seen other people do it in a sweep. Either way, doesn't matter, still does the same job. Again, just making sure that you keep the angle of the grind. Flip it over. 
and just do the exact same on the other side. Just keep adding water onto the stone as well, keeps the stone lubricated. So you can flip the stone over, that was it on the rougher grit that side, I've just uh, just uh, flipped it over using the, the thinner grit, this, uh, the finer grit this time sorry. Again, just tilting it forward till you find that angle, pushing it forward. Now there'll be people that are watching this who are experts. I am by no means an expert. I've never claimed to be one. I'm a novice in this. I'm learning constantly. So if there are people that are watching this, and they can see that, I, that there's something that I'm doing wrong, feel free to leave me a comment, let me know, and educate me. I'm always, I'm always learning. But to be honest with you, I've been sharpening a knife like this for the last few years, and I have not once had a, an issue with it. So, finish with the stone, and then I'll move on to use my, my diamond sharpener, starting off with the rough side. Now, with this, I like to just hold hold it in my hand like that, and just the way I'm doing this, it's kind of like how you would see you use a, a ferro rod, kind of that sweeping action. Or I sometimes find myself switching hands. And just do it in a circular motion like so. Again, just making sure that you keep whatever it is that you're using for sharpening, whether it be a stone, file, etc. at that correct angle. With the diamond sharpening uh, stone here, it doesn't need a uh, lubricated in oil or water, you can just uh, you use it dry. Switch over, use the, the, th uh, the finer grit. You can hear the difference, listen to the difference here. So this is uh, the rough grit. Fine grit. Here it's much quieter because it's a much smoother surface. And just repeat the process on the other side. So guys, that's me finished uh, sharpening the knife with the with the diamond stone as well. So I'm just going to give it a little wipe on the cloth here. Lay it down and put the, the sheath on. Now, I don't use any stropping compound on the leather itself. I don't know if it has any benefit. Again, if you are more knowledgeable than what I am, please leave me a comment. Let me know what the, the stropping compound does achieve. Um, anyway, so the sheath on. And that, that creates the, the leather to become more rounded and it raises the leather away from the stitching so you're not going to damage the stitching whilst you're stropping your knife here. So when you're stropping, you don't strop the knife towards you like so. You do it away from you. And I just do this a few times. On either side of the blade again and when I say you strop away from you you flip it over and you're then doing it towards you but you, what I was meaning by that is you don't push the blade towards the leather you're working a, away from the blade working away from the edge so 
You can just a few times on this side as well, and that'll do. So I can feel the difference. That is much sharper than what it was before I started to sharpen that. Again, I don't think it would. Yeah, it does actually. It does take the hair off my arm, off my arm, but. I don't feel the need for that. I don't feel the need for it to be so sharp. So, knife done. Set that aside. Get the whetstone back into the, the water. Let it absorb a little bit more. Laying it down on the finer grip to begin with. Take my axe now. Now, the same principles apply when sharpening an axe as what it did with the knife. So, again, Flat down like that, lift the axe, see the tilt there, you tilt it till you find that bite where you find that angle, again you're just pushing the axe away from you, not tilting it too much where you're digging the, the blade in, just till you feel that bite and pushing it forward. You'll be doing flip there. I'm just going to quickly rush through this guys just to show you, yeah, just flip it over and you're doing the same on the finer grip, you would then flip the axe over and repeat the process on the other side. Another technique rather than having the, the, the stone flat down and pushing the, the axe against the stone is to have your axe upright. It sometimes helps if you were to have your axe in a vice, but setting it on a table like this, just keeping a tight hold, taking your, your stone, and this time you're, all you're doing is tilting the stone till you feel that bite, which is here, and then just work the stone in a circular motion, working your way back and forward across the the axe head. Remembering to dip your stone in water every now and then, keeping ensuring that the the stone is well lubricated. Be dipping the water and flip it over using the. The finer grip now. You will switch hands and just repeat the process on the other side. So once you've finished uh, sharpening with the stone, just give the, the blade a little wipe down, that will take off uh, the residue. You'll see when you're using a, a sharpening stone like that, it leaves like a, a gunky residue on the blade. That, that's just the, some of the, the steel and the stone and the water all mixing and congealing together and it leaves a, a residue on. So you just have to wipe that away. And so that's done, I like to take my my diamond stone and again just uh, it's just the exact same process as what it was with the with the knife um rough grit finding that edge and just working it in a circular motion flipping it over finally the fine grit switching sides and then repeating the process on this side so i'm just going to crack on and do that just now Right guys, that's uh, all the sharpening tasks finished. The next uh, job that I was wanting to move on to is the, the axe handle. As I showed you earlier on, covered in dirt and grime and just doesn't affect the performance. I, I think eventually if you were to leave it like this, the, the dirt and the grit can get into the grain of the wood and then compromise 
the, the strength of the handle, but I think that would take years and years of abuse for that to happen. But it's more just for aesthetic reasons, having a having your kit look nice and good. So turn off a, a smaller get a sandpaper. It's a 120 grit that I'm using here, and just your sanding. Again, I'm not an expert. I don't know if this is true or not. I believe that you should always sand going with the grain of the wood and never across the grain of the wood. So I'm just going to give this a good rub down, try and get rid of all, these, all this dirt and grain, etc. Don't know how well the camera's picking this up, but you can, straight away you can see the, the difference in colour. So guys, you can see the, the difference in colour straight away, the handle's a lot lighter and the majority of that dirt has been lifted off so with a towel, just give it a quick wipe off and that'll get rid of any bits of sawdust that has been left on the handle. You can see like, a, I don't know what, what, what would you call this bit, the collar or the neck where the, the handle joins onto the the head of the axe. That was really hard to get in, try and sand. But what I, I would like to do, rather than having a leather collar around here, I'm going to make a, a paracord wrap and do a paracord wrap here. And that just protects the shoulder of the axe here. See if you get an overswing. I'll do a demonstration of that in another video actually. An overswing is if you just to say you, you missed a bit of wood that you're going to hit. And you, rather than the, the blade hitting into the wood, the your handle hits the wood and could damage and comp again compromise the strength of your handle here. So I'm going to do a paracord wrap around here and show you that in another video. But anyway, now that that's all done, get your rag, in my case, my wife's cleaning cloths, your boiled linseed oil, I'll just move the camera in a wee bit better so you can see this. You don't want to be taking a, putting a ton of this stuff on. It just needs to be small amount. So just dab the the cloth onto the the um, the oil, and you just want to rub the the oil on, massage it on and away. And just do that. Across the entire handle. So I'm going to crack on with getting that finished. So that kind of just concludes this video. So again, thanks to all my subscribers for uh, sticking with the channel so far. If you like, if you've watched, happen to click on this video, 
Thanks for clicking on it and thanks for watching it to the end. Um, if you like this video, go back, have a look at my previous videos. You'll see some overnighters, um, shelter builds, etc. Go and check them out. If you enjoy it, subscribe to the channel. The more subscribers I get, um, just a, a kick in the teeth off of reaching 100 subscribers. I think I've got 94, so six more. If I get six more people to subscribe to the channel and meet that a uh, first milestone hitting 100, that would be fantastic. Um, it would be great. It's been a struggle to get there, but see YouTube saturated in channels just like this. So there's a lot of competition out there, but again, thanks for a uh, thanks for sticking with it so far. So give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment if you see me doing anything that is a uh, wrong or if there's something that I could be doing differently. Leave me a comment, let me know. Uh, again, give me a thumbs up, comments, subscribe to the channel, and keep an eye out for the next one. Again, thanks for watching, guys.